Hi there, this is Alyssa from Unbusy, where I teach you how to simplify your home, create routines that work for you as a work-at-home mom, and up-level your work-from-home mindset. Today, we have a bonus episode for you all about how to pay off debt and build savings as a mom. We're bringing on a guest, Krista, to talk about all these money issues and challenges that we face as moms. Krista is a mom, wife, and founder of Money Mindful Moms, which supports moms who have the desire to start paying off debt and building savings, but don't want to sacrifice important experiences and memories while their kids are still young. So hi, Krista. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Me too. I love your mission to help us pay off debt and build the savings because I feel so often most of the do big things finance advice is geared toward men and paying off debt or directing as much possible, as much money as possible to our current savings goal is something I personally really enjoy. Plus, I think it's essential for every family and most of the families I know it's the moms who are doing the budgeting. So it's like there's this disconnect between who's getting the financial advice and sometimes it's really big picture and who's doing the actual day-to-day budgeting, so choosing where to spend the money, all that stuff. It's a big thing. So true. So true. So I'd love it if you told me a little bit about how you got started with this, because obviously we're on the same page. This is really important, but we're new to each other and I'd love to hear yeah. more. Yeah. So it's so interesting that you shared that about who the main voices are in the space, because that's exactly why I started. Um, When my oldest, who's now 13, was very young, is when I started kind of realizing that we might have a problem. And I was looking like most people do and starting to Google and, and trying to figure out how I was going to get a handle on this. And all of the voices that I were seeing were Uh, from the perspective of like an older guy, which is fine. They had great advice to give, but I just felt like it felt so unrelatable to me. I I wanted to hear from someone who was actually doing it instead of someone who was standing on the top of a mountain saying, this is how you get here. I was like, where's the moms who are buying diapers and planning the meals and doing all of that and trying to manage a household budget. And so I just started sharing online and started hearing from other moms that they were experiencing the same thing, but there can be a lot of shame around this topic. And so they were afraid to talk about it. And I'm kind of one of those people that's not afraid to talk about, (laughs) to talk about it. So I just started sharing more because I saw that it was helping people and it has really evolved over the years into a blog and a course. And um, it's become kind of my life's mission to help moms in this area. Great. While we're on that topic, tell me a little bit about your course, just so our listeners have an idea. Yeah, so um, it started off as me just working one-on-one with clients, and I was noticing these patterns that moms who were in that beginning phase of you know, I need to pay off debt and I need to start saving, but I just don't know where to start. I was noticing some of similar patterns with each of my clients. And so I started kind of developing a process that works for most people and developed it into a group program. And I actually do it live because I feel like there's a lot of value um, into like being able to um, actually have conversations with people and um, go through the process together. So it's a four week program and it helps moms who are at that beginning phase who just want to get a plan into place and finally feel like they're starting to make progress towards their goals. Okay, great. So if you're listening and that's you, now you know who does this from someone (laughs) else who knows what it's like to buy diapers. Yes, exactly. (laughs) So many diapers. Well, I have a little one now too. So I have a a 16 month old. So we were out of diapers for a while and now we're back in diapers and all the things. Okay. So do you have two kids total or do you have some? I have three. So I have a 13 and eight year old and now a 16 month old. So, okay, nice. Yeah. We have 14, 12, nine, six, and three. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you got a bit of a uh, age gap there too, between the oldest and the youngest. So different phases bring different challenges and different expenses for sure. With each (laughs) each phase. We still have diapers and now we're like actively saving for college. So it's quite a spread. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And along the way, it's like these natural savings goals that I'm, again, the guy's perspective doesn't, the mom perspective is, oops, we have more than two kids. Shoot. Now we need a minivan or something like yes. that. Now you mm-hmm. need to save the money so you can pay cash for it. I mean, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That wasn't a Dave Ramsey baby step. Can we insert it somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Can we figure that out? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yes. 
So let's shift to the kid part then. What are some simple yeah. ways we can teach our kids about money, even if you're a mom who doesn't feel confident in it yourself? Yeah, I think that so many people think, well, it's not something I'm super great at. So I, I'm not going to be able to teach them. And I just don't believe that to be true. I think there's so much that our kids can learn from us, even when we don't feel like we've quote unquote made it financially. I think for me, the most important thing is how you talk about money to your kids, because if they're hearing negativity around money, they will grow up thinking that money is difficult and hard and frustrating instead of money being a tool that we can use. And so I'm just really careful with my words around money with my kids, not saying things like we can't afford that we're broke. That's too expensive. Instead, substituting that with things like, you know, if my son wants this dinosaur and that's not in our budget, oh, I love that you're excited about that dinosaur. We're budgeting for other things right now, but let's talk about how we can budget for that in the future. So it's not, it's really choosing your words wisely, I think is the first place that you can start. The second thing that I recommend too for moms is bringing your kids in with you to the store whenever possible. Now, I know it can be a little chaotic when you have all your kids with you in the store and they're asking for things, but if they're seeing you making buying decisions, that's another way that they're learning about money. They're seeing you compare prices. They're seeing you have a a shopping list and a budget that you're working with and seeing you interact with the cashier. All of those things are valuable lessons to your kids. And then the last thing that I recommend recommend was actually recommended to me and I think is genius, especially if you have kids that are a little bit older, is starting to incentivize them instead of incentivizing for doing chores, you can incentivize to have them learn about things that maybe you don't feel as confident about. So to give you an example, since my daughter is 13 and we're starting to think about college, I had her watch a video about student loans, how that process works and how you can um, apply for grants. And I paid her $5 to watch that video and then circle back with me about what she learned. And so that way I didn't necessarily at that time feel confident in how can I teach her about student loans and um, you know all of the intricacies of applying for college. But I found a video that would teach her and I paid her $5 to do that instead of $5 to clean my house or something like that. So you can start incentivizing through books or, you know, reputable videos and things like that to teach your kids part of finance that maybe you don't feel as confident in quite yet. And that's a great tip because I think a lot of us are used to hunting up YouTube videos and our kids topics of interest. So this is just saying it's not a topic of interest, but something they need to learn about. And look, you don't Mm -hmm. have to teach it. You're good at vetting a video. You will know if the advice is BS or if it's real. You just watch it and then you put it on there. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Personally, I like all the budgeting and stuff. So I am excited for when I'm having my teens and preteens go through it. I'm just trying to decide when I should. Yes. So Mm -hmm. in the meantime. Yeah. And I think each kid is so different too. And and you know your kids. You know, some kids are ready for. Um, a certain type of conversation. Like my oldest is super responsible. And so I'll have her sit in sometimes when I'm making my budget so she can see my middle one, he would not go for that. Like he's just not there quite yet. So, you know, different, different phases for sure. Yeah. My older two are more, you know, like your 13 year old since they're about Mm -hmm. the same age. Something I've done too, in addition to the grocery trips to the store is the online shopping. So, Mm. oh, you got your birthday money. Which one do you want? You have this much. So do you want two things at this price or one thing at that price? And then I, you decide. That's great. Or like thread up online. I'm like, okay, I think you might like one or two of these 10 different tops. I think those are about your styles. You want to look through and they start naturally picking up the phrases we use around the house of, oh, that one was a lot more money and I like them about the same. So maybe I'll go for the cheaper one or- Uh. They're like, well, I kind of think that one is in really good condition. Everything else is scrapes and scuffs. So they're like, yeah, so we might want to pay more for a higher quality item. Mm -hmm. So I can tell. Don't you love when you hear them like figuring it out and their little brains working? It's it's fun to sit back and watch. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So going back to the moms again, where would you tell a mom to start when she's wanting to prioritize money goals? So she's gotten out of the, okay, I've made up a budget. That is very basic. And she's gone on to the next level to say, I do want these things for my family. And I know it takes money to get there. Now what? 
Right. Yeah. And it can be overwhelming because if you go online to look it up, there's so many different opinions on how to get started and what you should do first. And so the challenge that I always give just to help give you that quick win is pick in the next week, pick one thing that you're going to do to increase your income and one thing that you're going to do to decrease an expense. So usually the expenses part is the easier one because you can look and say, oh, you know, we've been going out to eat a lot. We can cut that back by half or, oh, I forgot about this automatic payment that's coming out for this subscription that I don't even use. We can cut that out. So that typically is the easier part, but finding one way to increase your income in your, in your household income. So that could look like if you are a stay at home mom, um, maybe you are finding something that you're already doing and, and finding a way that you can monetize that. If it's carpool and offering a carpool service, or um, if you have young babies at home and you're, you have a neighbor who you could watch their child for them, you know, a couple days a week to bring in some extra income. Or if you do work outside the home, when was the last time you asked for a raise? When was um, the last time that you asked if there was extra shifts or maybe a promotion within your job where you're working? So looking for ways to just find one thing that you can do to increase that income, because once you have that win under your belt, it's so easy to say, oh, wow, okay, that wasn't too bad. Like, what's the next thing I can do? And just tackle that next thing on your list. But start with picking one income increaser and one decrease, one expense decreaser. That's a really good, simple challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And then what would you tell our mom to help her get her family on board? So she's been reading all this money content and consuming it. She's like, yes, 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 I'm totally in. But her family hasn't been. And it could be a bit of a mindset shift. Okay, maybe not a bit. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it can be a challenge for sure. I think a lot of times what I see happen is we get really excited about it because we're the ones who have been researching and we're coming up with the plan. And then we sort of like word vomit all over. This is what we're doing guys. And, you know, get on board. And they're like, Whoa, what just happened? And like, what is she just like so excited about something all of a sudden? And, um, so I recommend as, as much as possible, um, to try and go into it with the mindset of, people will support that which they help create. So if they're a part of the process, they're going to be way more excited about actually doing the work. So instead of you coming up with the plan by yourself and then just sort of saying, here, everyone, follow this plan. What if you involved them in the planning process and you sat down and said, hey, I know that we all have you know different things that we're excited about. What goals do you guys have? And how can we do this together as a family to get there instead of you just saying, this is what we're doing and, and you all need to fall in, <laughs> fall in line with what my plan is. Um, and then make it fun. It doesn't have to be this boring uh, talk, money talk. I think sometimes people assume that it's like just this very dry conversation, but can you make goal posters with your kids? Um, if they're working on their own money goals and you have yours and you're making that together and crossing things off and making it a fun experience so that they want to be involved instead of feeling like it's another chore for them. Great tips. So would you tell our listeners where we can find you and if you have anything for them to take some next action steps on this? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm mostly over on Instagram. That's the best place to find me. And it's just money mindful moms. Um, and you can send me a DM if you do have questions over there. Um, I also have a blog that's moneymindfulmoms.com. If you are someone who wants to kind of dive in and, and binge all the content, there's lots of blog posts there to help get you started. Uh, if you're at that place where you want to get started. And like I mentioned earlier, I do have a program. It's called the overflow program. And it um, comes out a few times a year. It's a live four week program. So if you are ready to actually dive in and, and want to get to work with your own personal um, budget and um, getting yourself out of debt and starting to save, you can uh, just reach out to me on Instagram and I will um, get you connected with the next uh, round that we have coming up. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Krista. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. That's all for now. Have a wonderful day.